new, again, sort of a pilot project, so we'll see how it works out. If it works out, and we think it will, then uh, the, the we'll be coming to you for another one at the Cloverdale gotcha. operation, just to make sure we are doing everything possible to separate stuff out at the, at, at the point of contact versus later on. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, number three. Okay, and that's where I'm going to back up. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, Paul, I just have a couple of questions regarding the um, insurance brokerage services agreement and audit services agreement. Now, are these things that we do on an annual basis ordinarily, or is this something new? We go out periodically. It had been a couple of years since we'd gone out, so we went out this year just to make sure we were getting the right price and the right company. Okay, and so the insurance brokerage services agreement, what are the specific services that are involved? They do... Uh, uh, we self-insure for a lot of things, but they, they provide uh, insurance services. They go out and find the best price for our buildings, uh, for cybersecurity. Uh, they're, they're, they're an insurance broker, and so uh, they go out and find us uh, good prices on some of the things that we don't insure for. So, Okay, so the basically the um, long and short of it is that the cost of hiring them as a broker is presumed to pay back in lower rates that we pay on insurance? Yeah, because they can find folks that we can't, that, that, that you know, the, the uh, large uh, corporations that are using. So we, we do get a, a little break on the price okay. uh, for insurance services. And is the successful, I noticed there were, I guess there were what, three bids? Um, and we chose the one that is, it's actually, it's there, an entity that we There were four with prospective before. bidders. There were three that there were Four folks that asked for the for the bid package. There were three that submitted bids. Uh, we used uh, five evaluators to look over everything that they they had. We scored them, and it was uh, the uh, Morton and Company that came out with the highest score, despite the fact that uh, they were in the middle of the range with price. Okay, because that was another thing. In just in looking through the materials, part of the reason I had a question is because in the materials that were provided to us, mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the actual score tout. Well, I saw the scores. But there were no numbers oh. given with respect to high bid, low bid, et cetera. Well, uh, the, the low bid was post, and I, I apologize. I thought that was part of the uh, uh, of the uh, attachments. But uh, post was a low bid at 40. Morton was at 51. And then Arthur Gallagher was at 60. Um, but when you evaluate all the companies uh, with regard to what services they provide, uh, what kind of uh, approach they're going to use when they work with us, uh, there was a, a series of questions that we asked them, and using those answers, there, there's for every category there was a certain number of points assigned. Each of the evaluators graded them separately, and we didn't talk to each other. Uh, and then the bids or the, the numbers were all tallied up, and uh, then it, the, uh, we recommended the uh, company that got the highest number of points. Okay, and have we have we gone back and looked over the years to kind of assure ourselves and verify that you know we are by using this broker approach we're saving money as opposed to doing it ourselves have we ever put the numbers to that I, I don't remember the last time we went out and did that but I will get that information for you okay all right and then number four the audit services agreement again kind of same general questions this one it seemed to, that the um, the tally showing the responsive bidders did show the the scores on that uh, same thing again, is this audit services, is this something we contract for every year? We contract for audit every single year. Uh, it's it's uh, part part of our due diligence, obviously. So. Right. Okay. And so they'll, they'll pre present an audit report when? Correct. Uh, the audit report is given December. Okay. And Ide Bailey will be here. It'll come out in hard copy. We will provide it to you. Ide Bailey will be here to answer any questions. Uh, we've been pretty fortunate the last few years, and you know, we've had no uh, no findings. Uh, as, as a guy who used to fly airplanes, if you're unqualified, you can't fly. But in the audit world, if you're unqualified, that's good. So, uh. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, I think that that covers my questions. Then, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And yes. Just uh, follow up, um, commissioners and Commissioner McKinney. For both insurance brokerage and audit services, we typically can. Uh, we don't have to go out to bid on those. Those are person, what they call personal services agreement under the public uh, uh, procurement law. Um, 
But in the, I think, I believe in the number three, we've actually ended up saving money from prior years in terms of the fee. So, but we do this to make sure that we're getting the best bang for the taxpayers. Okay. That's why we do it. You won't see it every year. Um, and that's why we haven't done it, but we'll do it every couple of years to make sure that we're getting the best price. Well, and it strikes me, isn't it true that for auditing, you need a third party? Isn't that Yes, the, the GASB uh, accounting rules for governmental entities. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions about the, uh, the agenda? Then we'll go into the director's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners, uh, uh, good morning. Um, if it is beneficial for you all, uh, for uh, you, Commissioner McKinney, and you, uh, Commissioner Pickering, more than happy to bring you last year's audit uh, and uh, share that with you. Uh, as uh, Paul said, uh, we've uh, enjoyed a great run of unqualified uh, ratings across the board uh, and such. So uh, I'd like to start off on a, on a kind of a neat note uh, today. As you know, we're, as all companies and organizations, we're in the midst of uh, recruiting, hiring, recruiting, 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 recruiting. I recently met one of our newest recruits. Uh, our, our new team members here, and it was, I remembered her from, I, I couldn't place it until I did a little homework. Uh, she was, is actually the daughter of one of our current team members, but she first came to Ada County Highway District during Bring Your Child to Work Day. Oh. And from that point on, uh, she wanted to become a member of the Ada County Highway District, so now she is. Uh, so I think that's just a very neat thing now. That being said, again, uh, we continue to see team members departing. We continue to see new team members coming in. It's uh, uh, all for great reasons, uh, family, uh, great opportunities, that sort of thing. But the challenge continues. Uh, Deputy Director of Maintenance just let me know that today, uh, today's chip sealing operation has been suspended due to winds. Uh, we're very cautious about uh, all the stuff that's flying around out there uh, and such. So we'll keep you posted on that. We have some great news, and I think I shared with this uh, unofficially a little bit ago, but uh, we have the uh, confirmed uh, from our health insurance broker uh, that uh, ACHD will again see no increase in medical or dental going forward, and that is truly a reflection of the tremendous job that HR and all the team members uh, do when it comes to our wellness programs, uh, our, our focus on safety, uh, our focus on uh, all the different things we do that you've been very gracious about uh, supporting. And so that is a big deal. Bruce? Uh, yes, sir. Um, just so the rest of the commission, especially the new commissioners, will know, this broker serves somewhat the same purposes as the Morton Company does for our other policies. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is, after 37 years in that business, is that if we just went out for bid, instead of utilizing this health brokers services, we'd have paid millions and millions of dollars more in premiums. Absolutely. Uh, so I will uh, share this with the team uh, on the upcoming all staff, uh, and it'll be, again, great news. So again, thank you, commissioners, for your support on some of the things that we get to do here at the Ada County Highway District. Um, uh, I've been told by the deputy, I mean, by the chief of staff, I'm not allowed to talk uh, to you about specifics on this, but uh, as you recall, I can see you smiling through the mask. Uh, as you recall, a couple weeks ago, you got a tremendous presentation from our commuter right uh, team regarding an initiative that they had uh, put through on grant program. Uh, and they indicated that uh, there was some other things they were trying to do. I believe that in the near future, there'll be some great news coming from our commuter right team uh, regarding that grant program. Is that okay? All right. Okay, thank you. Good. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, auction went smoothly, uh, and such. So I have some preliminary results only, and they're preliminary. Uh, fun one, uh, and which, this was interesting. Our light duty vehicles and commuter ride uh, vehicles far exceeded what the expectation was, and our heavy equipment uh, was sort of, uh, that's what we sort of thought, and those sort of things. So this is kind of interesting how the money flowed. But right now, the fun one, which was the heavies, uh, we are ahead by $205,000 and change. We still have another part of this auction going on, and we're estimating another $131,000 mm -hmm. coming in from there. So that's, that's good news. 
uh, fund two, uh, we expected 163,000. We gained 273, uh, $237,000. Uh, so uh, again, our mechanics and our operators and maintenance and ops are doing a tremendous job of ensuring that the equipment that uh, the taxpayers trust us with, when we turn it back and send it over auction, we always get great results uh, from them. We have a lot of people that come in to, to purchase those. Um, tomorrow, uh, from 8 to 12, we'll be uh, entertaining uh, 366 Fighter Wings Best, uh, the top three sergeants and groups coming into here to learn about the following. Uh, performance reviews and feedback, thought that was very interesting. Process improvements. Incentive programs, we have a lot of those. Uh, working and leading different generations, be a great discussion. And then uh, thoughts on leadership. Uh, we're also going to give them a, what I call the petting zoo tour, uh, where we take them uh, to traffic ops and, uh, and our Adams Maintenance facility. And we're hosting lunch here by Goodwood. Uh, so it will be a phenomenal day, and I'll give you an update when it's all said and done. Mr. President? Yes. Director, could you tell me a little bit more about the process improvements that you'll be highlighting and sharing? Uh, that we hired great commissioners. and that we <laughs> <laughs> It goes uh, to uh, incentives. It goes to uh, different cultures. It goes to uh, looking at how we have integrated, like the integrated five-year work plan, uh, how we uh, have, have boosted up public outreach across the board, how our, uh, we have joint sessions, which I'll talk about here in a session with elected officials across uh, Ada County, how we work mostly nicely with the legislature, uh, and then we get even with them uh, later on. But those types of things from uh, just as opposed to laying down some concrete, what it really means to put everything together. Love it. Thank Does you. that answer that question? It does. Okay. Um, uh, as you know, we've been communicating with uh, the city of Star. Uh, they have asked for a joint session with all of you regarding the announcement that the uh, Highway 16 uh, uh, extension was going to be built in three weeks. Uh, uh, so, so they're very concerned about, uh, and justifiably so, the potential impacts to their city. Uh, we have scheduled a June 25th. It'll be on your calendars, uh, noon to one. Uh, we have suggested that uh, we host them for lunch here. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. They may want to host you in Star, uh, but more on that soon. I confirm that with uh, uh, President Goldthorpe and, and the mayor. Uh, earlier uh, this morning. So more on that as we get closer. Now I have some handouts for all of you and some homework for you. Probably not homework. As you recall, um, we've been working diligently to understand what the legislature meant uh, when they passed the property tax uh, uh, bills. And I think my first uh, session in front of you uh, said we had, we believed there were two, maybe three options, two. There are now six <laughs> uh, and such. Uh, Christine has done a tremendous job of going through everything across the board uh, to include all of the um, analysis background that goes into what I'm about to hand you. Uh, and uh, I'd like to share what your options are now uh, when it comes down to your considerations for the budget. We do have a recommendation that I'll share with you, and unless you say no, we're, we'll move forward on that recommendation. This first is... Yeah, you bet. This is a, this is a Oops, summary of, of uh, things, and this is the important thing. So again, uh, there's a quick uh, summary of the levy rate on that, on that single page uh, across the board. And as you can see, your levy rate is well under uh, what you're authorized uh, to do across the board. And uh, just a quick explanation on, on uh, uh, what uh, HB 389 suppose, or does say. That being said, this foldout is what's key to your decisions, uh, recommendations going forward. And as you can see, Christine and our, and our group 
uh, they've laid it out top to bottom on uh, what all of your options are and what the consequences or uh, additional requirements are if you take uh, option uh, three, I mean option four, option five, or whatever. Uh, so, so your staff has looked at this very carefully and uh, uh, unless uh, you have concerns, uh, we are looking at option six uh, that provides you uh, uh, the most amount of dollars uh, going forward, but at the same time preserves your opportunities to do something uh, with, in, with uh, um, other options the following year. So this is a this year only, this is what you get to select from. Those are the, uh, the, uh, the uh, implications and uh, we'll stand for any question, I mean Christine will stand for any questions. <laughs> <laughs> any questions that you might have on this but uh, bottom line commissioners um, we have coordinated this through the tax commission uh, folks we have uh, reached out uh, to uh, so uh, so this is ground truth uh, when it's all said and done uh, uh, we do believe that uh, this year will be most likely the only year that you'll have this type of an array uh, going forward and so uh, I'll stand for any questions you might have on this. I have one. Does option six increase our base by the 10 million? Yes. Thank you. Per year. Yes. Mr. President, I have a question, yes. if I may. Um, so I was at a meeting yesterday, and they talked about the foregone, the 1% for maintenance and operation, and then you could take up to 3% for capital improvement project. Do we have to specify what that project is. There was some conversation about it was just for that project and, until it's complete, but that does not go into our base. Am I understanding that correctly? Call it Christine. Okay. Or ask Christine. <laughs> we'll get the expert up here. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Uh, Mr. President, Commissioner May, yes. So with the 3% um, increase, that does have to be specified on what we're going to use. And at the time that we take it, we also have to specify a timeline. Okay. So if we say it's 10 years, in 10 years, it'll be automatically deducted from our property tax base, from our certification base. Um, that cannot be amended. So if we say it's 10 years and we're at 10 years and we're like, oh, we need it for another five, we can't. It goes away, it does not go back into our foregone balance, it's just gone. Um, the 1% can add to our base forever. Okay. So those are two separate options. Okay. There's, you that could break this down into more options, <laughs> but we stuck with six. That was my question. Yep. Thank you, Christine, I appreciate it. Mr. Uh, President, yes. Christine, maybe before you go, I do have a, a couple of questions as well. Um, there was a mention made uh, just a moment ago about the um, the total maximum uh, uh, levy rate the ACHD can, mm -hmm. uh, and I is that on our paper here? Where do I see that? Because it I is. see the levy rates from 2016 right to 2020. Right below that, it says per statute. Point oh oh two. Oh, I see. Okay, but then again, the the actual levy rate varies. Is regardless of whether our actual funds go up or down, the levy rate changes because of the way the property tax levy rate is calculated. Is that correct? So, Mr. President, Commissioner McKinney, that's correct. And it's not a calculation that we do. Do we have, can we make any kind of a projection? If we, if we go for option six, mm -hmm. can we make a projection as to what effect that will likely have on the average homeowner, for example? Because that's sure. the kind of information that... Sure. Uh, uh, people want to know do you have a number that you could give us on that or is that something you would have to kind of tally up uh, I, I know historically it's been about 30 to 40 dollars a year but again that calculation that I have to assume is that your property values are staying the same because right. we don't have anything to do with property values which is the base that then is multiplied by right so if your property values then go up then yes your property taxes go up by more than the thirty dollars a year for that but regardless because of how quickly the assessed value in the valley is going up 
our prop or our levy rate is decreasing. Right. So the levy rate's going, but in any case, so the dollar amount though of the increase is, is what we're looking at because that's what we care about for our budget purposes, right. right? So if I hear you correctly, you're saying that probably option six would result in a thirty or forty dollar a year increase for the average homeowner. So that's the median. And I guess the median now is just under $400,000 in this area. Is that correct? Right. And again, assuming that their property values did not raise from one year to the next. Right. If it goes, if their property went from 300 to 400, then there is going to be a variance. And in, in truth, dollar. it's my understanding, okay, the, uh, the property tax assessments just went out last week. Mm -hmm. And so all of this would be reflected in next year's property tax assessment, correct? Correct. So the property tax certification that we're signing right now will be for 2021. In 2021, property taxes are collected in arrears, which right. means the first property tax bill is your December one. And then next June, you pay your second half of 2021 taxes because property taxes are six month in arrears. Just one more confusing factor in that. Right. June and December. <laughs> well, yes, the whole system is made to uh, uh, tax our comprehension, I think. Um, <laughs> Pun intended? Yes, yes, very much. Um, I know I'll have other questions, but okay. that's all I have at I'm the moment. I'm available. Thank you. Thank I, have you. A, I have a little comment to I be made question. about that. In years past, if we've gone ahead and taken the 3% in new construction, uh, the increase on the property tax itself, even considering uh, inflation and the, usually the much lower levy, has been about the cost. This is how we've described it before, the cost of a latte. And so this will be a few lattes if we do that. Uh, Mr. Mr. President and Christine, so I, I want to think through, there's another aspect that the legislature adjusted our allocation through the sales tax. What was that? Do you know what? Right. So through the sales tax, that calculation is that I don't remember the number 362, maybe 319. I don't know what number it was. Um, but it had to do with increasing from 1% right. allocation up to 4.5%. The first 80 million being strictly for ITD. Anything above that goes out to the locals at the, but through the calculation of the highway distribution account. Right. So the way that I have that shown is that in the first year we'll receive they're estimating 84 million in that change. So I took $4 million multiplied it by the allocation that we get for, through the House Bill 312. So it's about $750,000 the first year. And then I took the average growth that we're seeing in um, sales tax and then calculated that again back with the Highway Users Fund calculation to get, I think the next year it's about one and a half. So it looks like we're getting a 750 maybe increase over what we get from sales tax and one and a half in the next year. Right. So um, that's that's helpful because I know we use that to fund uh, a portion of that. Not all of it is used to our Zelda local match for commuter ride. Most of commuter ride uh, as an enterprise fund actually comes from fees. And then that gives us the opportunity to use federal money and access quite a bit of federal money for commuter ride. I would like to propose um, uh, that we put um, at least another uh, 500,000 into transit because we can't boost up commuter ride at that rate so that we can take advantage of those federal funds and just enter into the same agreements we have with VRT. Okay. So uh, I'm going to propose that as part of our budget because we're getting this increase in in. Uh, a funding source that isn't tied up with strings like the the property tax is. We use we're able to use uh, the sales tax because it doesn't have those strings um, to do transit, which is called commuter ride. Um, and so, the other, of course, is that this year um, the feds are putting significantly more into transit. If you look at the, what's being put together as the DOT budget. It's a significant increase, and it just wouldn't be appropriate if we uh, let that all go to other states when we actually um, transit, just like commuter ride, is part of our um, com um, congestion management process. So I would propose that we move forward uh, with uh, the, an initial uh, appropriation of about 500000 to some of this 
new money uh, from the sales tax um, so that and that and that usually brings in multiples of I don't know what it is five times I don't know what the multiple is for federal money for transit and I know there's also money for in addition to that that we endorsed that VRT hopefully will get through an earmark for the state street plan so I think the timing is just right um, getting the increase in the sales tax from the state as well as um, the opportunity to take advantage of federal money um, which and we have an we have a process we don't do it we do commuter ride through VRT through an agreement so we already have that model in place um, to do that so I would suggest I think as part of this is to really leverage as much as possible getting uh, money uh, into the state from our um, from our, from this and it's not on this property tax but that just means we're not uh, this this will go further so that's what I'd like to propose in the budget is that we put we allocate an additional five hundred thousand to in addition to commuter ride and maybe there's there's probably going to be more that'll still go into other things but <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, Property I taxes. have a quick question before Don't go anywhere, Christine. Before we run out of time, um, Christine, what is the uh, for option six? What is the total that we would be? Was it ten point five million? It's ten point one million. Ten point one, mm -hmm. and then have we um, made a list of projects, those capital projects that we would be looking at? So per out. house bill, jungle. Yeah, I was just going to ask if we could still utilize the enterprise fund concept with option number six. Well, the right House Bill 389, uh, the provision that allows you to take all of your foregone and not your 3% in right. new construction, right. it requires that that money is dedicated towards operation and maintenance. But it's just a revenue allocation strategy. We would just move that money to do maintenance and operation, and that the, would free the one up. Per, 1%? I'm confused. No, no, no. So the under the options, I, it is confusing. Okay. You can do 1% for operation and maintenance, but right. in that paragraph below it says, and that would be in addition to the 3% and the new construction. So that's one option. Right. But it also says that if you don't take your 3% and new growth, that you can take all of your foregone. Right. And that has to go towards operation and maintenance. Okay, gotcha. And so whatever you, that 10 million, you could simply just shovel money around Get it however and you, to do right. it towards capital projects. But if we go the other route and have to use that 3% specifically for the capital projects, do we have some projects that we have yep. identified? Yep. I'd, I'd like to know what those are. Yeah, but the, the, the issue the issue is, is there a lot, there's a lot in there. I would just like to know specifically what we're looking at doing. Yep. Yeah. The issue is, is that you can't take all of your foregone if you take your your uh, three percent new growth, right? Um, and just a, a commission, uh, uh, Mr. President, and Commissioner Hansen, just as a question, as a follow up to your on the sales tax, are you thinking that that five hundred thousand is just a, a donation to BRT, Thanks, or is it something that would be specific through to commuter ride? through our agreement with BRT I'm just trying to get an understanding no it would be it would be not a donation it would be a, a, to help um, uh, the VRT budget Boise puts in uh, I don't know seven million dollars that's the, the main but we can do funds. either but it was so it's an initial investment in order to get those federal monies um, I was thinking we're doing it as a percentage of Boise's contribution because there's you know they they have like 90 percent of the local match but um, I, I think just we have to start this process. I wanted it to start eight years ago, but there were limitations on what we could do with property taxes. But sales tax, as you've educated me, does not have those limitations. And so right. with the opportunity, I really think, uh, especially now this year, we have the federal uh, the prioritization of transit matches, but you, that you don't get any of that unless you, but, unless but you have gets, some local contribution. So it would qualify as a local contribution. Um, who gets the money? VRT. Okay. Valley so it would be, uh, yeah, it would be a capital. And, I mean, a, a monetary yeah. contribution. Monetary to monetary investment, okay. in just like Boise does. Meridian's doing a little bit. Eagle's doing a little. And I think we once we're in there, we can start insisting that we can leverage that with other jurisdictions, because we've left so much federal money, even though the, the old funding program, on the table because we don't have the local match. Boise usually comes up with most of it. 
um, even Boise State and College of Southern Idaho or our College of Western Idaho are putting money in, local money in. Okay. So Mr. I think we can. Yes. Mr. President, um, I just, so thank you for the presentation, Christine and Director. I just, this is a lot for me as a newcomer to process and understand the nuances and details. I'll be following up for sure. But could you remind me again of like, what is the timeline? You know, we've had these recommendations, your proposed recommendation. How much time do we have to digest and understand the different consequences of this decision? And then when do we have to make a final decision? Uh, well, your final decision will be about two and a half uh, weeks prior to, or three weeks prior to August 25th, which when, which the budget goes into the into the paper. You can always lower that, but you can't raise it. So we're we're focusing for that. In the next, when's their first big meeting? July. Okay. Prior to July 7th, uh, uh, I need to make sure that all of you are comfortable, that all of you have all the information you need. I'll continue to come back to you either as a group or in private uh, one-on-ones with the specific task, whatever it takes to make you feel comfortable because it's, uh, right after that, uh, closely after that, we will hand you your budget books. And they'll be, yeah, Commissioner, Commissioner, <laughs> uh, Goldthorpe is laughing. They'll be detailed line by line uh, on everything we recommend that you approve going forward. But uh, for this, uh, again, the biggest, the, the biggest flexibility that the commission will have is that option six mm -hmm. across the board. As the as uh, general counsel had stipulated, uh, yes, that is designated for maintenance and those sort of things, but what that does do is provide an influence, uh, uh, additional funding, which allows you then to take an equivalent amount and put it over here or put it over here for bridges, overpasses, special projects, whatever it is, while your staff execute those dollars coming in from the foregone as has been outlined by the legislature going forward. So as uh, one former commissioner said it's all fungible uh, mm -hmm. and we will make sure that we you have all those options but you're going to have to be pretty comfortable by the first week or so in July as we move forward thank you mr. president and and uh, Bruce I know when I, I've seen this books the, the the detail is is very you know it's very detailed I've, uh, I've asked um, that we do as part of our projects part of the budgeting for our projects temporary installations um, it doesn't necessarily mean the project costs more, and I don't know whether that would be shown in the detail so that, you know, we test out uh, whether an installation is going to work or not. So it's a lot less costly than actually building it and then finding out it doesn't quite work and then replacing it. So my assumption is that a request to have more projects use a temporary installation process uh, as part of the long-term construction, um, which will save us money in the long run, uh, is not going to be reflected in the line-by-line -line item. But no, it is, is that, not. Okay, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. As so that's the, a. I think that's real important. Um, but uh, I, I, thought, I, I don't know where I could see that, having looked at last year's budget. Uh, Mr. How President, uh, Commissioner Hansen, again. As with any new initiative, uh, we'll walk our way through this. It's, yeah. You're not going to, see, I'm just to be candid, you're not going to see an onslaught of here's what we're going to do. Uh, it's a it's a step-by-step -step process like we're doing with a couple of the things here that have been on your radar scopes uh, and such in the past. I, I did share with Commissioner Hansen earlier on our walkabout uh, that uh, we are going to be investing in, in temporary speed humps uh, and such. I don't know how this is going to play out. We'll see what happens. It may be the biggest disaster on the planet. But then again, it's uh, we shouldn't be afraid to try. Uh, at least take a look. Uh, and so, so, uh, we'll, But we're going to walk our way yeah. through that. Mr. President, I have one last question. Yes. Director, is there um, any internal analyses that are happening in terms of how this House bill is going to impact us outside of just being able to take taxes and, and the, the levy, all of those nuances, are there other impacts that we need to be considering and looking at um, in the future? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Pickering, excellent question. The answer is yes. The answer is also we don't know yet. Okay. Uh, but it's a consistent review. Review. That's why I, I suggested to the commission that 
if you're going to do this, you should do it this year if you want to do this because my assumption is that there are other organizations uh, that are also looking at this and maybe wanting to do something a little different or not realizing the unintended consequences of having six to 12 options uh, as you move forward. So uh, we will continue to keep you posted. Okay, thank you. Mr. President, um, yes. Director Wan, did you state that you had a recommended um, option for us? At the uh, oh, yes, unless you uh, violently get upset, uh, we are moving forward as a staff uh, on option number six. On one six, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank I, you. I would uh, leave this with one last comment, and that is that uh, this particular conversation that we've conversation that we've had the last few minutes is probably about as important as anything we discuss all year, and we haven't even been doing it in a in a hearing. But because of the fact, especially um, the two two new commissioners, and I could be wrong at this, but the two co new commissioners that haven't experienced the budget season okay. before. Um, what these particular options and what the likelihood is and the possibilities going forward of all this going away um, makes this a, a, a not just a big thing, but it's huge. So uh, take all the time you need between now and whenever the few weeks going forward to speak with Christine and anyone else on the staff that you need to, but we're gonna have to make a decision and stick with it. Thank you. <coughs> And the it's reason, now time. and it's 12.08, and that's okay because of the importance of the discussion we just had, but welcome to the Highway District. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> We we'll begin this commission meeting by entertaining a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. And seconded by Second. Alexis. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Concerning the consent agenda, which is next, the items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no sec separate discussion on these items unless the commissioner or citizen so requests in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda. And all consent agenda items are commission action items unless noted. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. We'll go to the regular agenda not, uh, now, which are all action items. We have one item which is the Garrett Street bike improvements uh, presentation. We're going to be asked to approve it or not. And uh, Tom, you're on. <coughs> Missing a mouth. All right, thank you, President Goldthorpe, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Tom Laws, Planning Supervisor here at Ada County Highway District. And today I will be presenting on a public hearing for the Garrett Street Potential Bicycle Improvements. Um, for my presentation, I will start with just the quick project overview, provide an outreach summary, um, provide our recommendation along with, in coordination with Garden City staff, and then get into a little bit of the next steps. Um, as you recall, just a quick overview, um, the, the, the area that we're discussing today is Garrett Street between Chinon Boulevard and Marigold Street. Um, this section is a two-lane residential collector with 25 mile per hour um, posted speed limit. Uh, the land use on both sides is residential with sidewalks uh, most recently completed in a, uh, on both sides with a 2017 project and the roadway width is roughly 40 feet. In coordination with Garden City earlier this year, um, we went out to do some public um, involvement, public outreach, um, asking the question of whether or not we should remove um, on-street parking on one side of Garrett Street to add um, bike facilities on both sides. 
Uh, in total, over the roughly two-week period, we received 242 public comments, including 10 from the adjacent residents. Um, this outreach effort included postcards, social media posting, sandwich boards, and canvassing of the adjacent property owners by both ACHD and Garden City staff. Just a quick summary of what that outreach um, concluded. Um, in total, we saw of the 242 respondents, 199 agreed with the addition of bike lanes and removing um, parking from one side of Garrett. Uh, 10 were not sure and 33 disagree disagreed. In total, that's about 83% in, in support. Um, when looking specifically at the 10 adjacent property owners, six overall agreed, um, one was not sure, and three disagreed overall, or roughly 60% in support. Um, out of those three that disagreed and the, the 33 with the overall um, respondees, um, really the main theme was the concern of parking and particularly um, adjacent to the apartment complex to the west. So with that, um, ACHD staff in, in Garden City are, are re recommending that we move forward with adding the bicycle facilities um, with this proposed um, design here. And so what we'd be looking at is removing parking from the west side of Garrett Street. And, and currently, the only section that this occurs is between Thurman Drive and Marigold Street. Everything to the south um, that's identified in the red there currently allows for no parking. Um, in addition, since we will be removing that parking, we'll be able to add the, the bicycle facilities. Um, one, one addition that we looked at was currently on North Thurman Drive, um, there are no parking signs. And so um, in coordination with Garden City, we are also recommending um, removing the, the, those signage and allowing parking on Thurman Drive. And, and really we see this as a win-win. Not only are we gonna be able to um, add the much needed bicycle facilities, but there'll actually be a, a net gain in, in parking in this area for the adjacent residents. And so in conclusion, um, staff recommends that the commission approve the installation of bike lanes and a removal of parking on the west side of Garrett Street, Thurman Drive to Marigold Street, and the addition of parking back on uh, Thurman Drive as presented. Um, and that concludes my presentation and I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Tom? Mr. President, I have yes. questions. Thank you, Tom, for this great presentation. I first want to just commend you and the city of Garden City for a phenomenal job with the outreach. Um, super impressed with the numbers that you were able to receive and the feedback. Um, just great job. Really impressed. Um, so I'm just really curious. I mean, with the concept of us trying to be one and done, um, are there any other sections in and around that area? And I know obviously Chinden is ITDs, but are there bus stops nearby? Are there other you know, factors that are impacted or can be built upon this investment if we decide to go forward with this project? Mr. President, Commissioner Pickering, I think in terms of, of Garrett Street, this is, um, this is really the ideal. We're, we're really looking at going in all at once. Um, mm -hmm. I would add though that um, additionally, we had talked about including a section of Marigold as well. That's, um, that is a, um, a bike lane that um, routinely we hear from members of the public and the bicycle advisory committee that that needs a closer look and in the end we determined that due to how how large that would increase the scope and then also it it requires a little bit more traffic analysis we decided to hold off on looking at Marigold for now and just focusing on this section of Garrett Street. Tom do you know if there are any bus stops nearby that by Garrett and Chinden? President Goldthorpe, uh, Commissioner Pickering, there are currently two bus stops, both of them on Chinden itself right at the intersection, but not directly into the scope of this project. Okay. Do we, I mean, obviously I know that we don't have any say in that, but I'm wondering how do we communicate with ITD to say, hey, we're doing this project, either filling in sidewalk gaps that exist to go to that bus stop as more and more people will be using this project and this road, do we do any type of coordination to nudge them to fill in those gaps so we can coordinate that better? Mr. President, Commissioner Pickering, we, we have not to date, but I think that's absolutely something we can approach ITD and then VRT to look at um, connecting those, those two um, gaps to the bus stops. Perfect, thank you. And then I'm just curious, so you've mentioned that in 2017 we had sidewalks put in. Were those sidewalks put in on both sides or just one side of Garrett? Mr. President, Commissioner Pickering, I believe that the east side um, already had complete sidewalks, so it was just filling a critical connection gap on the, on the west side of Garrett. 
Okay, and are they both the same width, or is the newer sidewalk a little bit wider? Mr. President, Commissioner Pickering, I'd have to go back and double check. I believe the west side may be slightly wider just because of the newer standards we have based on when the east side was put in, but I, I can't say for certain. So in your recommendations, are we going to leave the east side sidewalks on Garrett untouched, or would those be put up to standard to like five feet, for example? Mr. President, Commissioner Pickering, we would just be looking at the existing um, roadway section, so not um, not looking at removing any of that or adjusting the sidewalk at this time. Okay. And then what about, um, I see that there, I forget, is it that's Thurman, and then there was another street on the east side connecting to Garrett. Sorry. Just curious, are bulb outs going to be considered to be put in as well? Thurman, yeah, on West Thurman. Um, Yes, would, would the pull bouts be appropriate to be considered in this project as well? Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Pickering, we had not considered those. I, I would not recommend bull bouts on the west side due to the, um, the bike facility adjacent. Okay. However, that is something we could look at on the east side because there will be um, that parking remaining and then the, the bike lane. So there is a potential um, for, that, um, for that east side to, to consider at Thurman. Thank you, Tom. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. President, yes. uh, just to follow up on that, uh, I was just walking with some neighbors up on Nez Perce, and, um, and we've done this, seen this before. Um, when you say there's parking, uh, there's not necessarily paint or designation of how much space there actually is, and sometimes people take significantly more. Um, if we're going to be painting anyway, is there a way you could paint so that uh, it designates where parking is and where parking is not, um, so that it it uh, um, even on Thurman, uh, where you're going to create some parking spaces, um, just so that it, the setbacks are clear and the widths are clear as to what uh, what um, what is designated as parking. You know, the public's providing free parking um, at the public expense, um, but uh, it's sometimes. Uh, uh, Unused. It also it's a good way of showing us what is or isn't used. So, is there budget uh, paint in the budget to actually kind of show that? I, I know the state of the art is just over here on 36th Street, where they actually have, you know, really clear designation where the parking is and where where you can park. But uh, would that be possible? Mr. President, Commissioner Hanson, absolutely. So the, the item before you today is really asking the question of should we remove parking from that west side to add the bike facilities, but but next steps, assuming um, we, we receive approval on this, would be to work with our traffic team to figure out exactly what that striping would look like and, and how that works out in the end. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. And also it's the old, uh, what is it called, the door mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. of, you know, the parking spots uh, lap over into the bike, bike lanes. You know, you end up just pushing cyclists out into traffic. Uh, Mr. President, yes. if I may, just, just a couple questions. I guess it sounds like then we're, we're in the early stages on this project, uh, Tom. Uh, what's our budget? What's the cost of this project, or is that not known at this point? Mr. President, Commissioner McKinney, uh, the, the true cost isn't known. We, we did reach out and have been working with our, our, our traffic team, and they felt that this is something that we could do pretty easily in-house um, with just simply um, some pain. I, I would say that if we are looking at um, bowl bouts or additional connections to the um, the current VRT bus stops. We, you know, that that price tag might go up a little bit. But right now, um, with with just the proposed paint, um, we we would likely do that how in house. So, don't have the exact number for you, but that would be the next steps. Okay. So the the concept, the intent of this project is simply to do some additional striping, and to either add some no parking signs in certain places and remove some no parking signs in other places. And that's basically all we're talking about. We're not talking about rebuilding sidewalks or curbs, et cetera. This is just basically a striping and signing project. Is that correct? Mr. President, Commissioner McKinney, that was the original t intent, okay. correct? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I do have one reminder for the commission uh, having to do mostly with uh, Commissioner Pickering's comment or in question. Um, as a part of our budget that we'll be discussing, we've already approved additional funds for community programs. And uh, 
when you see something like this, if it's, if it's important enough to you and to your district, uh, I would re I would suggest that perhaps you take that a look at the monies that are going to be allocated geographically to your district and consider things like this for those funds. Okay. Um, if there's no more questions or discussion, we have the City of Garden City is on Zoom and would like to uh, make some comments, give us some information, take some questions. So Stacy, would you go ahead and put them on? I have asked her to unmute, so she should be able to. All right, um, good afternoon, President Goldthorpe and commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide com comments. Garden City thanks you and your staff for finding a potential solution uh, to provide the bicycle lanes on Garrett Street and also for your comprehensive approach to the streets. Um, the bike lanes will create a regional connection uh, from the Boise bench, uh, clear through to um, the green belt connecting to Eagle. And we anticipate that residents from several jurisdictions will uh, benefit from these bike lanes. Um, moreover, Garden City receives numerous complaints related to the cut through traffic on Garrett and Marigold Street. I have one, one little bit of interruption. Would you please identify yourself for the record? Um, uh, certainly, President Goldthorpe, my apologies. I'm Jenna Thornborough with the City of Garden City. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, Garden City does receive uh, numerous complaints related to the traffic on Garrett and Marigold streets to cut through traffic, and we're hopeful that the bike lanes will actually provide a traffic calming effect for those residents. And lastly, Garden City is very appreciative of staff's um, efforts that went above and beyond to identify replacement parking for the, the parking that would be lost. Um, Garden City is very supportive of the project or of the project and hopes that you vote in the affirmative. Thank you. So uh, Jenna, so what you're saying is that not only will this increase the connectivity um, side of things from the bench down to the green belt, but also might take care of some of the uh, speeding and the cut through traffic on Marigold? Uh, President Goldthorpe, uh, commissioners, we're very hopeful that that will be an effect of the bike lane. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you very much, Jenna. We do have one thank member you. of the public who has signed in to uh, give testimony, and that's Becky Walker. If you'd go ahead and come up, you have uh, three minutes, and if you would uh, go ahead and identify yourself, name and address, and we're Hi, good. my name is Becky Walker. I live at 10827 West Eustick Road. <clears throat> um, I'm a full-time cyclist. I'm also a full-time nanny. I have four kids that I pull around every day by bike. Um, prior to living um, out west, I lived in the North End and had no trouble commuting by bike. I've lived out west now for five years, and although I bike into town every day, I bike into the North End, the East End, I take my kids to the Southeast, we have no trouble getting around. But as a resident of the west part of Boise, I find myself having a hard time connecting to my own neighborhood due to the lack of good infrastructure and connectivity. So I personally would love to see this happen because I feel as we grow, I see so much more commuting by bike in my neighborhood, and this will provide a safer way for us to get to where we need to go. Thank you. Becky, most of us see the same thing. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask you a quick much. question? Yes. yes. Yeah, so earlier when this was presented at our, our uh, work session, I asked about how um, cyclists and pedestrians, and you're perfect, uh, feel crossing at where Maple Grove and uh, Garrett come together. Um, and uh, you know what's that, what's that like? We haven't quite gotten to the point of having um, bicycle and pedestrian uh, Let's level just of stress. Let's put it this way: I feel less scary crossing there than I do at Chinden. Chinden, every day I feel like my life is on the line. Mm -hmm. I I because I go U stick, and then I turn onto Veterans Memorial oh, and cross yeah. Chinden. And especially now with even prior to the construction that's happening, it's always a gamble. Like there's no people are not looking. People are not watching, and so that's a much safer crossing point than at Maple Grove. Then yes, yeah. than okay. where I'm at now at Chinden and, and uh, Veterans Memorial. So Great. I think it would just create wonderful opportunities. Great. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have one additional person that's asked to uh, 
give us some testimony on Zoom, and that's Don Kostelek. If you'd identify yourself, and you know the drill from there. Thanks, Commissioner. It's Don Kostelek, 3687 South Geckler. <clears throat> As a former resident of Garrett Street, I would echo what <clears throat> Becky said about this area. And also appreciate both this project and, and the um, story yesterday about moving to protected bike lanes. Motorists in Ada County can leave their driveway and be confident that they have a connected road to get to their destination. That is not the case with bicyclists in our community. So when you hear things like, oh, we only have 1% commuting by bike, it fails to understand a few things. One, there are census tracts in Boise where we have 12% mode share by bike. There are two of them. We have six census tracts in Boise that have between five and 8% commuting by bike. Why is that? Because they have access to networks like you're proposed on Garrett that also connect to the green belt. It's like a trapeze artist. If I swing out there on that trapeze on my bike and I don't have a corresponding trapeze to get to, I'm not gonna go on that trapeze. This helps add to and make that system and helps bring those commute numbers up to those neighborhoods in Boise that have 7%, 8% and 12%. I also want to echo the Chindon piece and, and hope that you as a body can be a voice in the future. Meridian, a very affluent suburb, is getting a free pathway out of ITD on the Chindon widening project, yet Garden City is left to fend for itself for basic sidewalks or a pathway on Chindon through its community. So in part of connecting that system, let's bring some equity to the understanding of transportation funding in our region and for you on the compass board can be a voice that prioritizes access to funding to retrofit Chinden just to bring it on par with what Meridian is getting for free. So thanks for the progress on this. Uh, thanks for Tom's work on that. I have sent the story on protected bike lanes to the national blog Streets Block because I believe it's critical to know that an agency like ACHD that largely serves a suburban street system has made this commitment. I don't know of any other entity like that or state DOT that manages suburban streets who has done that. So that's how all this fits. And thank you for the good work on Garrett. It's a small piece of a much bigger vision and it's appreciated and noticed. Thank you. I would, however, uh, as if there's no other questions for uh, for Don, I would, however, clarify a little bit about the, path, the, the pathway that uh, Meridian got on. Chinden was compliments of Costco and a, and a star, STARS agreement that they'll be paid for over time. But uh, anyway, perhaps we can get another Costco to come in and do some more work elsewhere. Are there any other questions for Don or comments? Okay, then the... Uh, We'll go ahead and close this public hearing and uh, put the matter before the commission for a discussion and a motion. Mr. President, yes. um, I just wanted to take a, a minute and thank Tom and his team. Great presentation. Um, I certainly support this project. It's going to provide that much needed connectivity for bicyclists and address some of that traffic, um, the traffic issues with the cut through. So great job. Uh, super uh, effort on the outreach. So I want to commend you for that. And so I would be prepared to make a motion. Super. Okay, I would uh, move that we approve the Garrett Street bike improvements as presented. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? I just have one comment, Mr. President. Yes. I just, again, major kudos to our team, major kudos to the city, major kudos to all the folks that um, emailed us, um, care about this project, and I just think that this is a no-brainer for all the different reasons that we've heard today. Um, just really excited and happy to move forward with this. Thank you. Yeah. And, and my comment, be I, I've been watching this since the, the day the first word on this hit the street or hit the agency, and uh, I would say also that it's a no-brainer. Um, so, just a minute, Mr. President, I just want to say thanks, Tom. You've only been with us for a few months. So, and I know it's so a lot of work went on behind the scenes, uh, 
with a lot of the staff, but this is important to define our streets as complete streets. This is one aspect of making Garrett a complete street. Um, and so we want to make sure that that's it. I just really appreciate that, appreciate that movement that we're going to evaluate streets, not just by one mode or another mode, but as a complete street that is useful, connected, and safe for the people who live there. All right. Then I've, we have a, a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. So it looks like it, the motion carries, and thank Good you job. very much. <laughs> All right. The last item on the agenda, as usual, is public communications. Do we have anybody set to give communication, Stacy? I do not have anyone signed up. In that case, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good meeting.